All right, guys, the time for the test is here. I've got two cabinets cleaned and sanded and prepped, ready for primer. We're gonna use iCrow's 2K primer, and I'm gonna use Renner's 2K primer. This is Renner 643, and the uh, iCrow primer is the uh, 415. They're both catalyzed 15%, I mean 10%, sorry. They're both catalyzed 10%, and this one is unreduced okay no water added and this is kind of the cons consistency of that it's actually fairly thin thinner than what I expected so no need to reduce this at all this sprays really well um, this is the Renner 643 and Renner 643 is much thicker. I even put a little water in this to help reduce it down a little bit. And it's still much thicker than the iCrow. Now what I'm gonna do, um, I shot, I sprayed a kitchen with this um, the last, this past week. I used air assisted arrows and I used my, uh, I used my cup gun. I'm gonna put these cups on here. This is a uh, HVLP with a 1.3 needle that I will put my PPS cup to it. And it, I know for a fact that both of these can spray well. And what we're gonna do is look at sprayability unreduced with this one and reduced with this because this one's just gonna require a little bit. Now, the main thing I wanna show you is the vertical hang of these things, the sprayability and the vertical hang. dry enough we're going to shoot it again. This time we're just going to kind of keep going until they start running. I want to really know uh, we're going to use a wet mill gauge. I'm 
run about nine wet mills on this top rail and this rail. And it's still hanging really nice. We'll give it a little time because sometimes what can happen, some of the some coatings with a little time they start to kind of shift, they kind of migrate south. But um, right now it's hanging on here really nice. So here, this one had about four wet mills. Here we've got seven, about nine. I think I'm going to uh, switch over to my Icro. Still hanging pretty good, actually. So my thoughts about this is light coats are gonna perform much better than heavy coats. Uh, with the 643 and a 648, or Envirolac primer, Centurion primer, you can put it on pretty heavy. Um, this is actually performing quite well right here at about four to five wet mills. Uh, the issue I was having this past week on the job was I was doing an oak kitchen and so there was a lot of grain showing and I really wanted to fill the grain. So I went pretty heavy on it, uh, probably just a little heavier than this. And I uh, had I had a lot of runs. I had a lot of sagging happening here. It didn't happen immediately. It kind of happened uh, with a little time. Um, the other thing that probably makes a little difference is the environment as well. It's pretty hot in here in this shop. So that might be part of the reason that this is hanging because I'm um, pretty sure that I didn't spray much heavier than this on my first coat there and I was, I was having runs happening quite a bit. So I think there's something we could take and that is temperature and humidity is going to play a big part too in how some of these paints work. Let's take it up a notch um, on one side of the cabinet, see what happens.
very, I know you can't really see what I'm doing here, but um, I did go ahead and just like really heavily coat both of these. This one heavier though than this one. This one we're at about 12 wet mills, uh, 10 wet mills on the side, but here in the overlapping parts, we were at about 12. That's exactly where we're getting runs. And this is accumulating along the bottom edge there, pretty heavy. And um, I don't actually have too much right there, but we're getting a bad run there and a bad run here. So granted, I did put this on really heavy. It seemed like uh, this was working well at about four to five wet mills, uh, the first per coat. And uh, with plenty of heat, your temperature, I would say, should be above 70 degrees for sure. Uh, a little bit of air movement helps get some air on that right away. Uh, the runner, however, is thicker. I did reduce this 5%. Um, it sprayed just as well as this one, but the hang of this is definitely better. I measured this at 22 wet mills. Okay, 22 wet mills until I started getting a little bit of runs right here. And I'm getting a little bit of heaviness right here. I don't actually have any runs on the joints anywhere. It's a little heavy along the bottom. I would never put it on this heavy on a cabinet. That's why I never have an issue with runs. I can spray a kitchen. Uh, generally, I have no runs. The kitchen I did this past week, here's why I got runs. I'll tell you why. I did it with this Icro. I had, it was an oak cabinet, oak cabinets, and so I went heavy. I actually went heavy purposely because I knew I could sand it, right? But I spent a lot of time sanding out this kind of stuff. And then what I did is I sanded everything flat and I hit it with a final coat, very lightly, probably three to four wet mills. And that, that actually worked out great. So that kind of gives it that final sweet coat, which you really need just before your top coat. Now, uh, I think what I'll do is see, we're getting pretty heavy. I find that this stuff tends to, with time, kind of migrate a little more. Like when I was putting it on heavy at first, it didn't look like it was moving, and that's why I kind of kept putting it on. I, uh, back, I'm talking about when I was at my job site, I kept kind of putting it on pretty heavy because I wanted to fill the grain. If I could do it in one or two coats, great. I ended up doing three coats, and pretty much in all three coats, even at four to five wet mills, I did have some spots, probably because it was a little heavy, heavier than that in some spots. Um, it seems like when you hit about the 10 to 12 mark, uh, probably where your overlaps are, you're going to start seeing this. And it doesn't happen right away. It happens like sometimes with a, in a couple minutes or with a little time. Probably the same is true with this, but um, I use this all the time and I have not had an issue if I kind of keep my, my wet mill gauge under 10 as well. I try to keep it under 10. I do four to five wet mills per coat. Um, but like we've shown here, you could really go... 10, 12 and beyond and still get pretty good hang. So if you do an oak and you want to give it a good fill, give it a light coat, uh, four to five mils, sand it flat, give it a heavy coat and sand it flat one more time. Um, if you need to do a third coat, you could, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't really need to. So here it is. This, these runs are getting heavier. This is really running. This looks good right here. Oh, we're getting a bad one here. So kind of what happens is it seems like the whole thing kind of migrates and accumulates. And that's exactly what happened on my job. I had uh, an island with baseboard around it. And uh, all along the baseboard, it accumulated right on the edge of the baseboard. And so that was really a time consuming to try to fix all of that. So the same thing would happen with this, but just not as quickly. All right guys, now it's time to give you my thoughts on the iPro uh, paints, iPro primer and top coats that I've tried on this job. So first of all, I wanna say this, that uh, sometimes people ask the question, what's the best cabinet paint? Or they ask questions like, uh, what's the best sprayer to paint cabinets? And I'm going to tell you that there's like really not one good answer to any of those questions. And that is that every type of paint has its own properties. It has its pros and cons. Uh, I could name a, ha a handful of uh, really good waterborne products like Malaysia, Renner, Envirolax, and Torian. And I'll put Icro on that list. 
and um, and there's a handful more that we could probably name but those are some of the top ones that a lot of guys are using and when it comes to what's the best one that's a question that i can't answer for you because i don't know what kind of spray equipment you have i don't even know you know what you're exactly trying to achieve are you spraying raw wood or are you refinishing are you spraying furniture or are you spraying kitchen cabinets um, so there's a lot of things like that that factor into what's going to be the best paint for you it's a little the same way with what's the best sprayer to paint cabinets people will come on the facebook groups and say what's the best sprayer to paint cabinets well that question can't really be answered by itself either um, it's going to depend a little again what product are you spraying because some products spray better with one piece of equipment some do another and do you like to spray your cabinet doors hanging do you like to spray them laying down um, or are you spraying furniture? There's there's just so many um, bits of information that, that are needed to make that kind of decision about what's the best paint and what's the best sprayer. Uh, when it comes to sprayers, you know, probably there's a lot of good ones. A lot of guys will say, oh, you got to get a tri tech airless, just go airless. Other guys are going to say, oh, go air assisted airless. And then there's other people who are just, you know, they're using HVLP cup guns and turbines, you know. And so the thing is that all of these things work and they all have their place. And it's a little bit the same way with paints, I believe, that um, uh, partly, you know, maybe you have uh, an Envirolac distributor in your area or you've got a Malaysia distributor or runner, you know, like that can play into the, the, the fact that can factor in as well, like what product you're going to use. I don't like when somebody tries to answer the question and says, oh, they're all good products, doesn't matter what you use, they all, they're all top of the line. Um, just use any of them and they'll all work. The thing is uh, that, that might, there might be some truth to that, but I think that's too general of an answer because these products are all formulated a little differently. They all do have certain characteristics that make them like acceptable for certain things and not for others. They all have the kind of their issues where they're finicky and where they're where they're not, you know. And so I've I've used Malazy for uh, quite a while. That was like the first waterborne coatings that I went to was Malazy, and I was spraying Malazy with uh, air assisted airless and uh, HVLP, and I was struggling a lot with them. It. it just it was hard to atomize well and micro bubbles. It just you name it. There's just a number of different things that are issues that I was having. And when somebody told me, try an airless, and the issues pretty much all went away. So just to, just to show you that, that it's not always the product, sometimes it's the spray equipment, you know, and sometimes it's the spray equipment and not the product, you know, so you have to find the right combination of the two. So it's a little bit that way when I answer this question here today, um, should you buy Icro? Should you try this? Should you switch to this? Or should you use Renner? I'm not going to tell you what to do because I don't know your situation. And so the first thing that I noticed when I opened the can was that this the product, the primer, the primer particularly, was a good bit thinner than the uh, Renner 643. So Renner 643 is kind of my go-to primer. The 648 is another one I use some. But those are a lot thicker than Icro's. Uh, primer but there again um, it's going to depend a little bit on your spray equipment like with the with the 643 if you're spraying with an airless you generally don't have to reduce it at all if you're spraying with an HVLP you're going to want to reduce it but with the Icro it's not that way this stuff uh, it's also because it's it's got the thixotropic properties but it's thin enough that it's going to spray out of uh, airless, air assisted airless, HVLP cup gun, PPS, you can use a turbine gun, and it's going to spray beautifully without even reducing it at all. 643, on the other hand, you will need to reduce some, but there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Right? So, you know, when I first started spraying, I, uh, I had to learn how to spray waterborne coatings, and like any coating, there's always a kind of a learning curve, and I... Uh, when I first started, I always struggled a lot with runs. You know, I had to fix runs. I spent so much time fixing runs, sanding runs, recoding, touching up, and all that kind of stuff. And over the years, I've kind of like shifted to different products. I've upgraded equipment. 
and I've kind of learned like exactly how I do it and if I do it the same every time that I can get a pretty much uh, a flawless finish with almost zero runs on my primer top coat. The other thing that takes a lot of time is sanding. Um, if you get a lot of orange peel, that means you're not atomizing well enough and you're going to do a lot of sanding. So between runs and orange peel, a lot of sanding and, and, and touching up, um, a lot of beginners are wasting a lot, a lot of time, um, but it's part of the learning curve. So it doesn't hurt you to learn that. It's just what you want to do is come to a place where you have a product that works for you and you want to stick to it because you know how to use it. And so I don't care if you use Renner or this, they're, but they're both. If you haven't used either one, you're going to need to learn the same similarly. So when I sprayed this the other day, it was a learning curve because I've never sprayed this before. And I was spraying this like I would spray Renner and you can't, right? They're two different animals. And so I had uh, just, I had a lot of runs. I had runs all over the place. And when I went back to that job, it just reminded me of like my first year of trying to spray and how much time that I, you know, just wasted spraying, uh, fixing runs and all that kind of stuff. So does that mean this is a bad product? No, here's, you just have to learn how to use it. So here's how you use it. You're just going to spray it lighter, but you're not going to spray it as heavy as you do the Renner 643. So you might use this if you like to spray with a, uh, a turbine and a cup gun uh, with eight, like HVLP or even air assisted airless. But even with air assisted airless, which is what I was, I was using on the job, um, I just put too much on and it just, and it ran. It, it really, it, the stuff doesn't stay in one place. It, it travels, it kind of migrates down if you spray it too heavy. Um, but by reducing that amount and learning what your thickness is, you get yourself a mill gauge, like a, a mill gauge. Let me see if I can find mine here um, to measure your wet mills. Anyway, I got uh, too much stuff around here, so I don't know where it is, but uh, get yourself a little wet mill gauge. You can buy them on Amazon, wet mill thickness gauge. And uh, what you want to shoot for with this stuff, what I found, is to go not more than about five wet mills or you're gonna start having issues with runs. So the job I was doing on, I was doing oak cabinets. So I was trying to hit them a little heavier. And I was also trying to kind of, you know, test the product. So I hit it pretty hard on the first run and I had runs all over the place. Anyway, we fixed them all up and went back and hit it with a second coat, much lighter. I probably hit that with about five wet mills and that was um, a lot better. I still had a few runs to deal with, but not nearly as many. Um, I didn't actually expect to get that many with five wet mills because five wet mills isn't really that terrible much, but I actually did still have, uh, especially along so the edges, I had a lot of, it just kind of migrates, it migrates down. And so it accumulates along all the edges. And then if you have any corners where you hit them too hard, it's just gonna, it's gonna puddle there. And uh, the other thing that happened is it kind of alligators. Let me bring this in a little closer so you can see. Uh, this cabinet, I kind of purposely did it just to show you guys what can happen. So you have this heavy build along the bottom. We have sags and runs, sags and runs. But you have this separation happening right here. Uh, the same thing happened here on this joint. It happened down here on this joint and a big long alligator, or I don't know what you call it. Just kind of this big crack in the finish here. I had runs here and I didn't get that with runner. Okay, now again, I'm just gonna tell you it's not necessarily because one is good or one is bad. It's just, I didn't use the product correctly. <clears throat> this stuff um, from what I've learned, all right? And I've only done one job to be honest with you, like you ought to do multiple jobs. You should do it in different environments, different temperatures, because here's one thing that I already found when I came back in the shop and did this cabinet, I didn't struggle with runs like I did on the shop, uh, on the job site until I hit this like really, really hard. So the, other, the, the difference, the only difference is that in the shop, it was about 80 degrees because I had the heat on to warm up and uh, try to dry a door. So I had it about probably 75, 80 degrees in here. And I hit this with about seven, I started with about four wet mills and it sprayed beautifully. I went up to about seven, still nothing. I went up to about 10 to 12 and that's when I started getting this. So 
simple, just don't go that high. I mean, you're gonna have to do less mils per coat. Um, but if you're spraying with an airless piece of equipment and you like to spray your doors hanging and you like to spray them hard, uh, I'll just tell you right now, it's not gonna work. At least from what I've done, it's not gonna work. Keep your mills down to you know four to five wet mills. Keep your temperature right. It's gonna spray nice. This stuff sprays really, really well. I mean, it sprays beautifully. Unreduced, catalyzed, 10%. And so in my mind, that's like the number one thing I like about this. You can put this in a cup gun and it sprays like a charm. And it doesn't matter how heavy you're spraying it either. I mean, maybe it does. Maybe there's a point where it doesn't atomize well, but I opened up my needle. I had a 1.3 needle. I opened it up and I was putting a lot of paint out on some of the end panels and it still sprayed really well. Like it atomizes really well. So that's a big plus in my mind. Um, I can't say the same thing about Malaysia. I've struggled for a long time trying to spray Malaysia out of my Apollo. If the system isn't broke, why fix it? Almost said that wrong. If the system isn't fixed, why break it? But anyway, if you choose to go with this, just be prepared. There is going to be a little learning curve, but it's probably worth it. If, if you haven't like dialed in a system, you don't have a system that's really working for you, then by all means, give this stuff a shot. If you're a turbine guy or you know, you, you're doing furniture or you like to do really fine finishing, cup guns, pressure pots, uh, PPS cups, uh, this works fine. This does too, by the way. I mean, this stuff uh, I have found just works really great with uh, PPS cups, pressure pots, air assisted airless. So my final thoughts are, I've only done one job. I can't give you a, you know, a complete analysis, but I'm sticking with this basically because I've already learned it. Would I recommend this? If you're willing to uh, not hammer it with an airless, then yes, this is gonna be a good product. If you're the kind of guy that likes to blow and go with an airless, then no, just forget it. It's not gonna work for you. This is for like um, fine finish guys that are, you know, taking the time to put things on in multiple layers and, and uh, it'll work really well for that. All right, hope that answered your questions. Um, I, I really didn't test it a whole lot more than just this one job in these couple cabinets. Uh, but if the system's not broke, why fix it? And that's where I'm at. If, if you're looking for a system and haven't started one, I would say pick and choose. I would say try this. Like try this first, see if it actually works for you. If you're new to this waterborne and you're new to cabinet painting and new to the equipment, and if you're asking these questions, those are good questions to ask, but I don't really know if you're gonna get all the right answers just going on Facebook or YouTube because there is so much information out there and conflicting information. And this person says, oh, only airless. And this person says, no, only air assist airless. This person says, oh no, just, runner and this person says oh no just i crew you know it's like there is so many different opinions um it really boils down to finding someone that it can that does something like that you want to do that has a system that you want to adopt and and then follow the system like right down to every detail uh, it's the only way you're going to repeat like to get the same results as somebody who's doing a good job you're going to have to repeat all the details. Don't think you're going to get good results by mixing in some of your uh, poor um, products or or you name it. So anyway, hope that helps. Uh, leave me a comment, question, and um, you know I'm in New England and Massachusetts, and I've been thinking that maybe someday we will um, do a little live. I mean, like a demo where you bring your cabinet door or some wood or something and we'll get a facility and we will we'll just have fun spraying and testing different things if you have any interest in that um let me know let's do it